Hey guys, I'm Blondie Bytes, and today I'm going to show you how to access GitHub through the terminal. The first thing we're going to do is open the terminal, and right now I'm in my user directory. So to change directories, I want to do cd, which stands for change directory, and I want to go to GitHub, which is just where I keep all of my repositories. And so to see what else is in here, you do ls, which means list, and this shows you all the other folders in that directory. And so to go back to my user directory here, we would do cd dot dot, and that will bring me back to just my username, and now we can go ls, and you can see GitHub is here. ls is really helpful because you can see where you wanna go next, and so here we know if we forgot where GitHub was, or like what exactly it was called, like if it was called GitHub just all lowercase, or if it had a space, or it had a dash, we can always do ls to double check that. So, and if I do cd dot, it'll just keep me in my same directory, so that's what the dot stands for. Another way you can do this is if you go to Finder, and say you go to Documents, and like say I go to Program, and I go to Python, and I wanna go to this directory, I could do cd, and then drag this in here, and it will have it all ready for me, and then I can go here, and then I can go ls, and notice I have all of this stuff there too. So, but we don't wanna be in Python. We wanna go to, like, uh, where we want our repositories. So we'll go cd tilde, which will bring us back to our user directory. Notice we're here, here's our stuff. We go cd github, and this is where we want all of our, our repositories. So next, we are going to create a new repository. To do this, we do git init, and then whatever we want to call it. So we're going to call this lists, because we're going to make lists in an HTML file. And so it says we initialized a new empty git repository. So if we go to the finder, and you can do command click, and you can go back. I just learned that the other day. Um, and we go to GitHub and we can see that lists is here. And we can actually ls, it is also here, so it's all interconnected. So now we're gonna add some stuff to our list repository. So to do this, I'm going to open up my Sublime, but you can use whatever text editor you want. And we're gonna call this file, if we go file save as, we'll call it lists.html. We'll make our way to where we want to save this. And here we are. And notice at the bottom, this says HTML because it knows it's a .html file, so that's really nice. So the color coding will be good for our file. So we're gonna add kind of the usual things to our HTML. So we'll do doc type, exclamation point, HTML, then open tag HTML, then open tag body, and we want to create like a page that shows our favorite colors. And so we're gonna start off by doing an open tag header, my favorite colors, then close the header tag. And we wanna list them now. So we're gonna do open tag UL, and it's basically an unordered list. And we're gonna do open tag LI, which means list item. And my favorite colors are red, We'll close that tag. I also like black. And then I also like green. We'll close the UL tag. We'll close the body tag. And we'll close the HTML tag. And then we'll save. If we're in our list directory, we can go ls. Notice how we have this file here. And now we can do git status, and that will show which files have been added and not added to the staging area for our commit. So git status, if it's in red, it hasn't been added to our staging area, which I'll talk a little bit about later. And if it's in the green, that means it has been added to our staging area and it's ready to be committed. Notice our lists.html has not been added, so we're gonna do git add lists.html. And now we can do git status, and now it's green. It's ready to be committed, and there we are. The reason you would have a staging area for your commits is because, like I said in the last video, you want your commits to tell a story. 
So you might want certain changes to be in one commit and others to be in a different commit, and you can use the staging area to decide which files you want. So now that we've added lists.html, we are going to commit this file. So we do git commit dash m, and then whatever we want to call the commit. So we're going to just call it a knitting lists file. We'll enter. Notice we had 17 insertions. There's only one file here in our staging area for the add, but we are not done. This right now is a local change on our computer, but it is not pushed to the cloud. And so to push it to the cloud, we do git push origin master, we hit enter, and all of this just basically says it's pushed on to my account. This is what it looks like on the master branch. And it's 100% done, so we can actually go to GitHub and see it online. And so if I go here to lists, here's our file, and there it is. It has all our stuff. But now we want to edit it a little bit. When we open it here, we have my favorite colors, red, black, and green. But we kind of want red, black, and green to be their appropriate colors. And so we can actually edit it in GitHub since it's a quick, simple change. And we can click edit here. We're going to add space style equals color red, since this is red. Then we're going to go to black and do style equals color black. Even though it is already black, we just want to have the setup because if we change black to say purple, it'll be easy to add in later. And then we'll do style equals color green. And close that. And we kind of have preference over our colors. We really like red a lot more than green. So we can change our U to an O and make this an ordered list. And so now we can commit this by scrolling down. We can say added color and order to our lists. Again, you can add more description if you want, but this was a quick and simple change. So we're just going to commit it. And here we are. And now it is here. But if we go to our lists here on our local computer. We will open it in Sublime and our changes won't be there. Now we need to get our changes down from the cloud. To do this, we do a git pull, which is git pull origin master. And notice we got all of this new stuff. And so now when we open this file, we can actually just open it here and notice we have red black and green in their appropriate colors. So basically throughout this entire tutorial, we've been talking about push, pull, status, commit, add, but how does it all fit together? Well, when we made our first change, we made the repository, we made the new file, then we did a git status to see if files had been added or not. Then we added the file and then we committed the change locally on our computer. To get the change up to GitHub into the cloud, we had to push it up to GitHub and that allowed our local computer and GitHub to be synced. So how this all works is we make local changes on our computer, we add them, commit them, push them up to the cloud, and we might be working with other people, so they will push their changes up to that same repository, and we can pull their changes after they've pushed them up. And when we pull, we get all of the changes that were made online or other changes that people have pushed to that same repository. In the next video, I'll talk about how we can use GitHub as a type of social media, how you can watch and star other people's repositories, and I'll see you then.